To start, could you take us back to the beginning? How did you discover your passion for storytelling? Oh, great question. Thank you for asking. Um, I mean, I started acting professionally when I was 10 years old, just doing kind of theater around uh, Portland, Oregon, where I grew up. And um, that's where the storytelling love started. And I just expressed myself creatively, really had a good time with the theater stuff, knew that I wanted to transition to film and television eventually. So I actually stopped theater entirely and focused solely on film and television at like 13 and just loved the camera, loved being able to share that story through living, someone's living room. You know, um, so it's yeah, that's kind of where it started. And it's it's been a growth since then. Acting is a lot harder than a lot of people realize. There's a lot yeah. of things to learn and, and to focus on and to find. Um, and it's just a continuous learning process. So anyway. when you look at your career as a whole, who or what has had the biggest influence either personally or professionally? Yeah, it's mostly been the people around me. I got to be honest with you. Um, a lot of actors have that story, like people thought I couldn't do it and I proved them wrong. For me, it was the opposite. Um, I had so much love surrounding me. And anytime I would get to a place where I was like, man, I don't think I can do this anymore. Whether it was my mom, my wife, my friends who were like, that's preposterous. You're going to do this. <laughs> you are going to be a part of this industry. Um, you just got to refocus or recenter or believe in yourself, whatever it was. Um, so really the, the people in your life, the, the correct people who support you, but also challenge you to be 100% what they know you can be, you know, that's, that's it. Right. You're talking about that journey. You've had so much success already in your career. When you look back, is there a particular moment that stands out to you? Man, you know, what's funny there is, and I, I, I didn't think of it until recently i was on a disney set <laughs> and it was the year was 2013 the exact set was uh, it was a show called live and maddie it was on disney channel starring dove cameron and um i was having so much fun that was the first time i'd ever booked a guest star right which so instead of one line or two lines i now have a full episode that i mm -hmm. get multiple scenes and i was so nervous and we start shooting and i was having so much fun and i remember looking around and being like i know what i'm doing like I'm actually killing the jokes. Anytime there's a note, I'm handling it perfectly. And it, now it's not so much stress as it is like, oh my God, this is so much fun to create. So I felt like up until that point, it was kind of that first little thing where I was like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm really scared. This is crazy. There's cameras, there's famous people around. And after that, it was kind of this moment of like, oh, you got this, you know exactly what you're doing. And uh, since then it is, I've been able to live in that space of like, yeah, I got your note yeah, that audition didn't work out fine. Right. Just in your self-confidence in your own creativity. Like it, it was such a game changer. So funny you asked that. Cause I, I've been thinking about that moment a lot lately. It's really That's funny. A great, uh, great answer. You and your wife just started your own creative producing company. How did that come to fruition? And have you found now that the work that you've done behind the scenes has impacted the way that you approach your work as an actor or vice versa? Oh, thank you for asking that. Yeah, we just started our own production company called Worthwhile Productions, uh, total play on our last name. Um, yeah, you know, we have always wanted to create in this way. Um, and I think the main thing is before where it was just a vague, like, I'd love to shoot something or we should do something. It has now become much more focused and like we want to help creative people get better. I think that's where it is, is like, it would be fun to put out something for profit one day. Sure. But um, our first couple of projects have been very like, like helping people with demos or helping people with social media um, to help them be more attractive for casting versus just attractive mm. for fans. It's very specific and it's very like, let's help everybody understand your business, your image, um, and how to strategize specifically with that rather than just here's a selfie. <laughs> I hope that was okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're starting and we're having a lot of fun. We just uh, were on set for a couple of weeks straight shooting some horseback stuff, um, cool. some like Western and some English saddle stuff. Um, it's, it's really fun <laughs> once you start doing your own thing. Yeah. Having had such a tenure in this industry, has anything surprised you about this journey thus far? What's the biggest piece of advice you give to somebody that's starting out? I am so glad you asked that. I have had this answer prepared for months now because patience, ooh, I hate that word, <laughs> patience and living your life. 
happy. Okay, I got a story to go along with it. It's not a long one. Okay, um, my, my my wife and I have just started kind of uh, living our life in an own way. We were living in Burbank, California. We were broke. <laughs> we were like had this new baby. We were so like ah, this is we're living the dream. And finally, we just moved a little outside of Los Angeles, kind of to an area where we really um, we like. It's cheaper living, so we're not broke all the time. Um, and I really wasn't sure if that was the right move. I was like, I think I'm supposed to stick this out in LA, like really pounding the pavement, trying to get this done. Um, way, moving to this, uh, this new place where we live, I'd prefer not to say for privacy reasons, but <laughs> literally stopped at a hotel room. And that's where I got the audition for Acapulco, which episode just aired this last Friday. Yeah. Shot this episode in a hotel room. And three days later, got the call that I was flying to Mexico first class to go shoot. And I was like, I, I don't know if y'all believe in signs or what, but it's like, it's literally the week that I decided I was going to live my life in a way that I was going to be happy with and not worry about what people thought, not worry about the industry or whatever, just literally instant success results. Okay. It was like amazing. And since then I have like, this is the busiest year I've had in years, just because I'm happy. <laughs> I'm enjoying my life and I'm patient. I'm allowing it to come to uh -huh. me. I'm not stressing out about like, should have booked that. That was wrong. I should have done that. It's it's not our journey to tell it's we're all kind of on the, on the wave. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's my long answer <laughs> to, um, I really, my advice is be patient. I live your life in a way that you are happy day to day and the rest will come. The rest will come. It's crazy. That's a, yeah, that's great advice. And things will, things will come that are meant to come and a perfect segue to this next question, but you also recently became a father. How has fatherhood impacted the way that you view your craft and the projects that you go out for? So thank you for asking that. I love being a father. Uh, my son is just everything to me, just the absolute joy. Obviously every father would say the same. Um, but one, it definitely helps, if you're just going to directly say it, it helps with your range of characters you can play. Um, mm. As I'm starting to not be a teenager anymore, yeah. right? <laughs> you kind of don't, the, the characters I've played are very young, very like bro -y, very high school, like jock characters. Now I can now play characters with some depth to them because I have that emotional, that life experience. You know, if you're just kind of living your life in this mold and not getting out and getting experience, how are you supposed to bring that to the table as an actor or a creative in any way? So um, he's done nothing but like made me feel confident, make me feel like as long as my son has had a good day, I can lay my head on my pillow at night and feel good. Um, and then specifically for acting, it is like, I feel like I can play any character because mm -hmm. I, I got the experience. I get yeah. I got two hours of sleep last night because my kid had a cop, whatever the game, you know, and go from there. Although my funny story with that, I had been a dad for like months and I was tired, right? That's like the hardest six months is yeah. when you're the first time you're a parent trying to figure this out. And I got an audition to play a 16 year old. <laughs> and so I'm putting myself on tape with my wife <laughs> and I do the scene and my wife goes, okay, you look like a 28 year old tired dad. You're supposed to be 16. <laughs> like get the bags out of your eyes, like pep up your step. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's all great. That's a good story. And speaking of Acapulco, <laughs> you, your episode just recently dropped. What was it about this character and script that attracted you to it? Um, well, first of all, I had been attracted to the show forever. Um, they really, um, I, I originally auditioned for Court Over, Overstreet's part, um, the original Chad, um, back when the pilot <laughs> was dropping. Yeah. And since then, they have just brought me back for everything they can think of, really trying to get, get me on the show, um, which I thank them profusely for. I've I had so much fun. It probably just to help with that patience advice that I just gave. Yeah. Um, I auditioned for Chad on Acapulco in uh, 2020. And every, it took a couple seasons or two seasons. And then I finally got to be on the show early 2022. So things take time in this industry. So for any young actor listening, it's it, the patience is the key because it will happen. You just got to let things fall into place. Um, but when this character came, I not only was like, oh, I know how to play this guy. <laughs> I just like, I'm a living in car in uh, what incarnation of uh, college bros, I guess that, that's what I do. But um, they just Acapulco is such a fun show. And everybody's really it's people have told me it's actually funny. It's light and it's not so heavy handed. Like people love that right now. They love to just laugh and watch a good story and enjoy themselves. So the ability to just enjoy it and not 
have to hit any like crazy drama um was just so much fun and then being on set with cord with that whole cast was like it was so free we just got to create and be funny and we'd throw in a joke and the director would be like yes love it let's roll again it was it was fantastic it was really fun yeah i've had so many questions about this show but I, one that just yeah. popped out of my head after that that's happened a lot in your career where you've auditioned for a particular role and then they found another role that fit you a little better how does that change that that preparation and that mindset thank you for that question that is the best question ever um for young actors don't audition to book the part audition to book the room that we've mm. been being told that in acting class for a decade for me right is book the room don't book the part and you're like yeah but the part's so good i want the part the part's great but the reality is is once that casting director likes you they'll bring you back yeah. forever they have a short list they don't want to go scouring the globe they want they have their people that they want to make sure okay i have this part this guy's perfect this girl's perfect um, and I mo most of the parts I've booked have been because of that. I've originally auditioned for the pilot, but instead I come in for a guest star and it's done nothing but help me. And it's a better part for me and I can kill it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's uh, frustrating, but it's really, really, in the end, it's better. Yeah. And what yeah. is that mindset for you as an actor coming in when you're doing a guest star? How do you integrate yourself amongst the cast? And what is that process like? Great thing. Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, you definitely enter every set. You're the one trying to acclimate to them. You're not trying to take anything over, right? And a lot of mm. mistakes that actors make is they go, well, I'm the guest star, so I'm kind of the star of the episode. No, <laughs> you're there to help the show. And when you help the show, everybody shines. The episode's better, yeah. everything's better. So when you come in humble and going like, let's lock in, um, it's really, really great. Like, for example, on Acapulco, um, me and my, my co-star Owen Joyner, who was on um, Julian the Phantoms on Netflix, yeah. he's a fantastic guy. We just got to hang out for that whole week. We were on the same level. We came in, we knew nobody. We were just kind of hanging out together, trying to figure it out. As soon as we set foot on, on set, um, Cord just like brought us in and was like, you are my bros, you are my like people. Um, and we just started hanging out, getting to know each other. We'd rehearse a lot. Cord would kind of take the lead. He was a great leader with helping us settle into a scene. Um, so when that cast, and the, by the way, the whole cast, I want to talk about the whole cast in just a second, because everybody was like that. Yeah. And once you're accepted like that, and you're cool, and you're not trying to take photographs with anybody, you're not, you know what I'm saying? Then you're in, and you get to perform and create and be a part. By the end of the week of shooting, we felt like we were part of the main cast. You know, like it was yeah. just so cool. We felt like we could contribute ideas. We could enjoy ourselves. We could just take that deep breath to know that we we got this, um, all that stuff. So. It, yeah, that's really great. Mind your mind your humbleness and let them just amplify you up to that fantastic guest star spot. Throughout your career, you've had this nice balance between drama and comedy. For you, it's one more challenging than than the other. Great question. Um, they both they both have their challenges. That's for sure. I love comedy. I gotta say, I gotta feel like drama is a little more difficult for me. Strangely enough. Um, I, I definitely relate more to the comedic. You know, I grew up being on Disney Channel shows. So my instinct is to be like kind of funny and over the top. And it kind of has taken me a long time to learn how to bring that down. Kind of goes along with that dad question where it's like, okay, this is dramatic. So you don't need to get in their face. You just need to exist, right? Like all that kind of stuff. Um, but thank you. I've, I've really loved bouncing back and forth between drama and comedy, knowing that I can do both, that I can handle both. Um, yeah, it's 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 a challenge, but it's it's really fun. Yeah, and this project looks like so much fun. This project and role look like so much fun. And you've you've shared a couple of like kind of the behind the scenes moment. How did those kind of the bonding that happened behind the camera lend itself to what we see on screen? Everything. <laughs> the short answer. When you have that relationship with the cast and that camaraderie, that chemistry, it absolutely shows on camera. Yeah. Yep. I've, and I've got to be on both sets, you know, um, where sometimes there's just people are busy, people are focused on their lines, people are focused on whatever it is. Um, and you, you see the episode and you're like, yeah, we didn't really connect. We didn't have the chemistry. The scene was good, but you know, personally that like, eh, it could have been a little more, I could have been lovey dovey. I could have whatever. Um, but literally like for Acapulco, especially, um, because we were brought in so much, it was easy. 
there was no forcing a high five or forcing yeah. a moment. It was like, yeah, this, this is us. So we've literally been hanging out for the past, you know, five days, just getting to know each other. So we're, here we go. <laughs> Roll camera. We'll see what happens. And you're, you're having a, quite a moment with Apple TV plus right now. You've got another <laughs> series coming out later this year. Is there anything that you can tell us about being involved in season two of little America? You've done your homework, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, so Little America uh, was really, really cool. I, I didn't know very much about the show, unfortunately, um, when I went on. But obviously, once I once I got cast, I started looking it up, and I get to be in the premiere of season two, which is going to be really fun. He's a very similar character, <laughs> to, not <laughs> not not funny, but like I, I play, excuse my French. I play the douchebag. That's what I play, right? And that's my other advice to actors if you want to get into it: is know your typecast, right? What do you look like? What are you going to play on TV? Play their game first, because mm. at the end of the day, you get to play yours as it goes on. But Acapulco, douchebag, white boy, American, right? Uh, Little America, I'm going to play like a douchebag office worker. <laughs> <laughs> like our, our protagonist has to deal with me uh, on her day to day. Um, but it was really cool. It's really fun to be a part of a story that way. When you get to be the antagonist and push that protagonist forward in their story, that's where the magic happens. Um, so yeah, Little America was a really great set. Um, I'm so thankful to Apple TV um, for double dipping this year <laughs> with me. It's uh, yeah, they they have a really wide variety of great content, great TV shows, um, and I think they're going to just continue to pump out some really good stuff. Um, inspiring, funny, um, collective, you know, like very um, yeah. like bringing everybody together in a, in a lot of ways. So yeah. Two more questions for you. When you're playing a character who's so different from you, how much fun is that? Is that a challenge? <laughs> Great question. It is not as much of a challenge as I'd like to admit. I, no, I always tell, I'm, I'm an acting coach as well. I teach a, teach a lot of uh, younger kids and we have a lot of fun. I always tell them that acting is your excuse to act the way that you are not allowed to in real life, right? There's no consequences in real life when you get to be sassy or rude or angry or all these things. So the creativity really does come from like, oh, I get to be angry. I'm so excited. Like I have, you know, it's been a tough week. I can't wait to get this audition in so I can let loose a little bit. It's therapeutic. You really do get to be that part where you're like, man, remember back in fifth grade when you wanted to yell at that person, but you couldn't? <laughs> well, guess what? Now is your chance. You know what I'm saying? So um, no, it's not as much of a challenge because it is your excuse to like, let to those emotions out yeah. to play. Nailed it. Yep. And then final question for you. You're such a dynamic storyteller. As you look ahead to the next five to 10 years, is there a dream role that you would love to bring to life either on the stage or the screen? What's left on your bucket list? Man, that's thank you for that question. Uh, I want to play a cowboy straight up. <laughs> Try to work on that. Uh, I'll see where that fits in. Um, I'd love to, uh, I'm really liking television. You know, television has kind of been my favorite over the past decade or so. Um, so I, I really like diving into that um, and then getting behind the camera more, you know, yeah. like you said, five, 10 years from now, creating my own stuff, um, whether I'm a, like on camera or not during that process, it doesn't matter to me. Um, just finding my own voice, you know, like as I near 30, kind of finding my own voice, finding out what I have to say, um, what what people I can represent and what people I can put on a microphone um it's it's really it's really exciting to think about so yep i'm gonna continue forward keep uh keep being patient <laughs> but keep keep living my life in a way that i feel proud of.